Hi, and welcome to another trip report. You join me at London Heathrow's newest terminal, Terminal 2, for today's flight to Toronto on board Air Canada's Boeing 777. As I check in, I'm reminded of Canada's travel restrictions at the time of recording. Only double vaccinated individuals are permitted to enter the country without quarantine. Face masks must be worn on the plane in busy public areas, which differs from the UK at the time. After an easy check-in, my boarding pass is printed. Terminal 2 was opened in 2014, making it the newest of Heathrow's four active terminals, used by all Star Alliance carriers, which includes Air Canada. You can expect to travel from here if you're booked onto one of their airlines. After a 15 minute wait and a smooth security process, I find myself airside. A quick look to the departures board shows my flight is listed as on time, refreshing due to the air travel climate when I travelled early July 2022. I still have two and a half hours until boarding, so let's take a look around this spacious terminal. On the ground floor, there's a selection of cafes and restaurants to cater for your pre-flight needs. And to the right of security, you'll find the duty-free shop. A little further on, and we find the Lufthansa Senator and Business Class lounges, which can only be accessed by Star Alliance Gold members, Lufthansa First and Business Class passengers. However, no lounge access for me today, as I travel in economy class. Here is an Air Canada Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner in from Montreal, however I won't be travelling on this one, and right behind it is the Queen of the Skies, the Airbus A380. Remember, you can find my full tour of Heathrow Terminal 2's departure area linked in the top right corner or in the description below. With my ticket printed for my connecting flight, it saves me time and stress on the other side of the pond. And my gate has been called. 
I'll have to make my way to the satellite section of the terminal, and unfortunately, no trains take you there. However, for passengers who require accessibility help or assistance, can inform the airport in advance and arrange a pickup to take you right to the gate, but this needs to be arranged 48 hours in advance. Our gate is B49, a 5 minute walk from the tunnel connecting the main terminal building. For all their worry over COVID protocol, boarding was a disorganised mess. Due to my status, I was placed in boarding zone 3, but it was impossible for the two desk agents to facilitate the fully booked flight. The three separate queues spilled into one. And after a delay of nearly an hour just from the queue reorganisation, I finally made it onto the jet bridge and ready to board. The inbound plane from Toronto will be the same one to fly back. This 15 year old Boeing 777-300 registered CFITU. It was first flown on April 21st, 2007, delivered to Air Canada just two weeks later, where it remains to this day. To reach the economy class section, passengers must walk through the rear cabin of Air Canada's signature class, consisting of 40 life flat seats with full meal and drink service. Next, I passed through premium economy with just 26 seats, promoting extra seat pitch and width. And finally, the tightly packed economy class configured in a 343 layout. At each seat, passengers are provided with a blanket and pillow, however I ended up using neither of these. I am seated in 42k for today's journey across the Atlantic, a standard fabric economy seat with an adjustable leather headrest. All passengers can select their seat free of charge and check in from 24 hours before departure, or pay a premium for an upgrade. Seat pitch is 31 inches, which, although nothing special, is comparable to the other airlines operating this route, and will be adequate for this 7 hour flight. Although. I am 5 foot 11 and found the pitch satisfactory. Those over 6 feet may wish to upgrade. There are two mounted chargers for every three economy seats, although everyone is provided with a USB charger below their IFE. The tray table is large and adjustable, while the seat back pockets no longer feature a physical magazine, instead only a safety card, advertisement and a sick bag. Let's have a look at the personal entertainment screen provided to all passengers. I found the Panasonic EX2 system to be highly responsive with quick loading times. Passengers can view detailed flight information, the food options available on board, or browse from a large range of curated content, including movies, TV shows, and music. Crew call and overseat lights could also be controlled right from the screens.
One thing worth noting for all sitting in window seats is the irritating positioning of the seat legs from the row in front, which may hinder comfortability. The taxi to runway 27 right is relatively short due to the terminal's central location in the airport. And a whole 45 minutes late, we are now ready for takeoff. Quick reminder that if you enjoy what you're watching, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support my content. Additionally, leave a comment or some feedback as I do read all of them. Not after too long, we crested the cloud line to reach the blue skies. Recent hit movies, including the likes of 
uh, well, Morbius, are available to stream on demand throughout the duration of the flight. While being able to view available food and beverage options, annoyingly you could not order them directly from your seat, in contrast to the at-seat delivery service provided on competition WestJet. Although Wi-Fi can be purchased, you're better off downloading some content to your personal devices as I found the prices to be extortionate. A top speed of 9.8 megabit per second internet costing 21 Canadian dollars per flight or 6.50 per hour didn't appeal to me. Not an hour into the flight and lunch was served, I opted for the chicken ratatouille but vegetarian options will always be obtainable. Serves with a chocolate orange pudding, bottle of water, bread roll and salad. I found it quite good. Very flavourful, although portion size may be a slight downside. Bring your own snacks if you have a large appetite. Restrooms were spacious, including a baby changing area and pattern design on the wall. Aisles were narrow to say the least. I found this out when boarding, my carry-on suitcase mere millimetres wider than the aisle. Below us is Greenland, almost 80% covered by glaciers or ice caps. It's a shame that it could not be fully enjoyed due to the dirty windows, which I also found to be greasy. A second food service commenced as we approached Canada, a chicken filled pastry. This was served with a free drink, alcohol was included. As we descend into Toronto Pearson, let's rate the experience. Check-in was easy, it could be completed by the Air Canada app or at the airport, including free seat selection 24 hours before departure, 10 out of 10. Boarding was chaotic and disorganised. Having read from other reviews that this was a repeating pattern with them, it seems this is an issue to work on. 1 out of 10. I found the crew polite, welcoming and attentive. 8 out of 10. The seat comfort was average. For me it was manageable, but a taller person could leave the flight with cramps. That being said, the headrest was comfortable and manoeuvrability was easy. 6 out of 10. The restroom was spacious and clean. 6 out of 10. Cleanliness was a downside. Rubbish between the seats, greasy windows and screens, both contrasted the hard stance of the Canadian government towards Covid. 3 out of 10. The food was mediocre. While the main meal tasted good, the portion sizes were small. The second snack offer made up for this. 5 out of 10. Wi-Fi, although expensive, is covered by the pleasantly surprising IFE offer. 8 out of 10. Although delays are expected, especially for the time of the year I travelled, punctuality scores 6 out of 10. And finally, value for money. The single leg from London to Toronto cost me £225, valuing the flight at 6.35 pence per mile, presenting good value for a flat carrier, 7 out of 10. Overall, this scores Air Canada's Boeing 777 at 60 out of 100, just one point ahead of Tui 787-9 mid-haul product.
Connecting passengers were allowed to exit the aircraft first due to the late arrival. I was included in this tranche, although I did have a two hour wait ahead of me. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this trip today. Please leave a comment with any feedback or suggestions and subscribe if you're new around here for more trip reports and aviation related content. Check out my playlist links for more trip reports like this one. Once again, thanks for watching and as always, safe travels.